this video, I'm going to answer the most common question that I get about gem cutting. Hello and welcome back to another gem cutting video. I'm Andrew Stewart, a gemologist and gem cutter from Ireland. I get many comments with people asking the same question. In my video, How to Cut Gemstones, Faceting a 30 Carat Brazilian Amethyst. I started with a rough piece of amethyst weighing 91 carats, and I ended up with a 30 and a half carat gemstone. That gave me a yield of 33 and a half percent, which is actually a pretty decent yield for the style of gem cutting that I do. However, many people are shocked that 60 carats is lost in the cutting process. And I get many questions asking why that is and could that weight loss be avoided? So in this video, I'm going to try to answer that question by looking at what factors affect yield. Every beautifully polished gemstone starts life as a piece of rough crystal like these here. First is the shape of the rough gemstone and how well that matches the design you plan to facet it in. Choosing the wrong design can have a large impact on your final yield. This is a faceting diagram for a round brilliant cut. It is a very popular cut for gemstones. However, not many rough gemstones come in a rounded shape. This is a 200 carat piece of Oro Verde Quartz. It has a fairly decent oval shape, but it's also quite thin. This means that it's unlikely to be able to be cut in a single stone. So to maximize the yield, the best thing to do here is to saw the stone into two. I have not made up my mind on the best way to cut this gemstone yet, but I will make a video on it when I do. The colour of a gemstone is extremely important. It makes up 60-70% to 70 of the value of a finished gemstone. This is a piece of tourmaline. The colour is much darker along the c-axis of the stone, and this deep red colour is much more valuable than the pink along the AB axis. If I cut this tourmaline with the C axis facing up, as it is here, it will yield a much smaller gemstone, but that gemstone should be much more valuable. It is very rare to find a rough gemstone with no inclusions. This is a 3D laser scan of a diamond crystal. The computer has mapped out all the inclusions and planned out where the crystal is to be sawn and two gemstones cut from the crystal to give the best yield and the clearest gemstones possible. This is technology that a coloured gemstone cutter like myself could only dream about possessing. 50% yield or more is easily possible with such technologies. But a lot still depends on the quality of the rough material and there is certainly no guarantees of achieving such high yield rates. Generally speaking, it is best to remove as many inclusions as possible. Here we have another piece of tourmaline and you can see there's quite a large fracture running through this gemstone. This will need to be removed during the cutting process. If this type of inclusion was not removed, it would make a weak gemstone that could easily break while setting it. Here's how it turned out. It started off as a 9.2 carat piece of rough. After cutting, it weighed 2.8 carats, which is pretty reasonable considering it had a large fracture running through the rough crystal. This is a 9.5 carat piece of Cambodian blue zircon. It has a really good shape for faceting. It does have a few inclusions, but nothing too serious. Its yield was much higher and ended up being 
a 4.75 carat gemstone. This is how it turned out. Here are two amethysts that I cut recently. This darker one I removed the inclusion from and the lighter one I left the inclusion in. This lighter amethyst had a higher yield of 30%. However, the inclusion does make it a less valuable stone. With the darker amethyst, I chose to remove the inclusion, which I'll show you later on in the video. Doing this meant that I only achieved a 20% yield, which is considerably lower. Which one would you prefer? Leave your answer in the comments below. And now it's time to do a bit of gem cutting. I'm going to show you the faceting of the crown of the darker gemstone and why I chose to remove the inclusion. As you can see, this was quite a deep gemstone. Towards the top of it, where the table would be, you can see that feather. That's actually a healed fracture that's quite common in quartz, known as a veil. This material is quite dark and the camera cannot pick up the whole inclusion. It runs to about where I've drawn this line. I have quite a bit of material to remove here. And while it is possible to saw that in the hope of getting a smaller second gemstone from the removed material, but this inclusion is simply too big for that to be possible. This crack in the stone is actually the inclusion and it's quite a lot larger than it looked from the other view I showed you earlier. It encompasses all of this area. I mentioned earlier that this type of inclusion is a healed fracture known as a veil. Veils like this are generally partially healed and often have cavities. These type of cavities can make the gemstone weak and in fact I had a lot of problems polishing the lighter colour amethyst. Now that I've the inclusion removed you can see I've lost quite a lot of material. Now it's time to cut the crown of the gemstone. This gemstone is going to have a high crown. 
as the inclusion did not go quite as deep as I thought it did. It is actually really difficult to estimate the depth of an inclusion like this and very easy to make a mistake and often this causes weight loss when cutting a gemstone. If an inclusion runs deeper into the gemstone than you initially thought, this means you'll have to cut away more material. With all this in mind, this explains why cutting coloured gemstones, the industry average is approximately 30%. And I hope this answers the question, why so much material is lost when cutting gemstones? Thanks for watching and hope to see you for the next faceting video.